Hey guys, in a recent video, I showed how to install transmission using a VPN in your Docker or Open or yeah, Open Media Vault uh, home server. And today I wanna to show you how to install Qubit Torrent also using a VPN for a little extra security when you're doing peer-to-peer -peer sharing. Okay guys, so this is the Qubit Torrent website and really we're not gonna use this for anything. So I'm just gonna go ahead and close it and we'll come over here to uh, Marcus McNugan's Qubit Torrent VPN Docker uh, Hub homepage. And this is what we're actually going to use. Uh, he's got a lot of good information on here as far as uh, what versions it uses and what sizes you're going to have. Um, here is the Docker command that we're sort of going to use. Uh, below that, he's got a list of uh, environmental variables that you can put in here. Uh, he talks about volumes, he talks about ports, um, how to access everything, uh, the default username and password to log in. Uh, all of that is on uh, this uh, hub.docker.com uh, page here. And I will have that linked uh, actually in the blog post that's in the linked in the description down below. Man, that's a lot to get out and I haven't had enough coffee yet. So, uh, so what I've gone ahead and done instead of uh, using this docker run command here. Uh, I've actually got a, a stack that I made out of that. Uh, let me drag that up here so we can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, so instead of just having these few lines, uh, the stack I made is a bit more uh, involved here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that. Um, and I'm gonna come over to Portainer and I'm gonna click add a stack and I'm just gonna paste that in there. But we're gonna go back and talk about some other stuff first. So in order for this to work, you're going to need to go to your VPN provider. Uh, in my case, I use private internet access. They're not paying me, this isn't sponsored. That's just who I use for my VPN needs. Uh, you'll need to make sure for this to work though, that, that whatever VPN provider you use uh, is, is compatible with open VPN. And that's one of the things I do like about private internet access is that they are compatible with open VPN. So what you'll need to do is go to your open VPN compatible uh, VPN provider, uh, that's a sentence, and uh, make sure that they've got open or OVPN files that you can download. Um, and here on op or private internet access, they do have uh, you know a, a section in their uh, in, in their wiki about where can I find OVPN files um, on this page. I'll have this linked in the description in case you want to use PIA as well. Uh, but if you scroll all the way down, I'm actually using the legacy configuration files, and I'm using legacy IP. I've down downloaded uh, this zip file right here and it's on my desktop. Now we don't need it immediately, but we are going to need it in order to get Qubit Torrent uh, to work with a VPN in this particular case. There may be other ways to do it. This is just how I'm doing it for right now. Okay, so now you've got a, an open VPN uh, compatible provider. In my case, I'm using PIA and you've downloaded your OVPN files from that provider. Once you've got those two things set up and ready to go, uh, we can move forward. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here we are, we're back on Portainer. Uh, this is the stack that we just pasted in here. Uh, and we'll just kind of run through this real quickly. Um, the, the first uh, few lines here, pretty standard stuff. Uh, we've got our version two, we're using uh, our services, will be Qubit Torrent VPN. We're gonna pull this image, we're gonna name the container this. Uh, we've got a privileged equals true. Uh, we need that in order for things to work properly. Uh, below that, we've got some environmental variables. Uh, your VPN username and password need to go in there. Uh, that will be, in, in my case, again, I'm using uh, PIA. So my PIA credentials go in these two spots right here. Uh, below that, we've got PUID and PGID. Uh, that's just for setting permissions. Now, if you're not sure how to get these, uh, your PUID and PGID, uh, what we can do is open PuTTY, which I'm gonna go ahead and do now. <clears throat> And I'll go ahead and log into my Latte Panda. Oops, it always opens it in the wrong screen. That's super frustrating. So I uh, log in, we're gonna log in as root, like so. And so what we need here is the username, or so we need the, the IDs of the username that we're logged into in Portainer. Uh, there's a really good chance that this is just going to be admin. So, uh, and you can see that up in the top right-hand corner, my username is admin. So I'm just gonna type an ID space admin. And you can see my UID is 998, uh, yep. And my GID is 100, so that is correct. So we can go ahead and move forward from there. Uh, below that, we've got a web UI port and an incoming port uh, ENV. These are optional, I put them in there anyway, um, but this is like port or the web UI port. This is uh, the port you'll use to log in. We've actually declared it down here as well, um, but I've gone ahead and just put it in here just because uh, VPN should be enabled, that should be yes. 
LAN network, uh, you can probably leave this alone. So my uh, network it, uh, setup is 192.168.1. whatever. Uh, yours might be 192.168.0. whatever. Um, make sure to change this one accordingly. Uh, below that, we've got name servers. Uh, these are Google name servers. Uh, you can use those. You can use uh, Cloudflare, which is the 1.1.1.1. Uh, you can use whatever name servers in here you'd like. Um, just these were the ones that were in there by default. I don't mind using Google name servers, so I left it alone. Uh, ports below that, again, we've already declared uh, ports 8080 80 and 8999. Uh, now, you, you may already have something, like if you're using traffic, there's a really good chance that uh, you're already running something on port 8080. So make sure you change these accordingly uh, to make sure that nothing will conflict on your server. Below that, uh, we've got some volumes. We've got a configuration volume and we've got a downloads volume. Um, so you're going to need to make sure that uh, you've got these two folders available. Uh, rather, you'll need a config folder and you'll need a torrents folder. So if I do this, if I go to 192.168.1.238 and then I go to port 81, I'll log in. Now keep in mind, I'm logging into Open Media Vault here. If we go to shared folders, uh, you can see I've got a config folder and a torrents folder. Um, those are both uh, here in shared folders, as well as over here in SMB CIFS. Uh, you can see that both of those are there. Uh, so make sure that you've got both of those available in your shared folders um, and actually in your SMB CIFS, because we'll need to manipulate uh, some of your configuration folder uh, contents as well here in just a moment. So go ahead and, and put in your paths here. Uh, just make sure to append the, the configuration uh, with something like Qubit Torrent VPN or whatever you'd like to name that. Um, same thing with torrents. Uh, you can just actually put in that absolute path. Uh, you don't need to append to that with anything. And below that, we've got uh, restart unless stopped. Uh, that's pretty standard as well. And that's all we've got in there. So now let's go ahead and make sure that we give the, uh, the stack a name. So I've just copied the name from here up to here. And we'll go ahead and scroll down and we'll click on deploy the stack. Okay, so realistically, we're going to expect this to have failed because we haven't actually given it uh, the OVPN files that it needs in order to connect to the VPN. So if I come over here and I go to the logs, uh, you can see that there's nothing, no OVPN or OpenVPN configuration files located. So we need to make sure that we do that next. So what I'm gonna do is actually stop this container like so, and then I'm gonna open up FileZilla. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll go ahead and just drag this over. So what I'm gonna do is go to 192.168.1.238. I'm gonna log in as root and I'm gonna type in my password. And I'm gonna change that to port 22 and I'm, then I'm gonna go ahead and connect. So we'll go up until we get to our SRV folder here. We'll go to dev disk by labels files. Uh, I'm actually gonna drag this out of the way because uh, my big dumb head will get in the way and we won't be able to see what's going on. So then we'll go to config. Uh, we'll go to uh, Qubit Torrent VPN and we'll go ahead and open, open VPN folder there. And now there's nothing here. So this is where we're going to come over to the files that we downloaded from our provider. And we're going to come in here and we're gonna look and see if we can find uh, whichever location we would like to connect to. So I'm gonna go ahead and say uh, Sweden. So I'm just gonna drag Sweden over there. Um, and then I'm also gonna grab uh, the, the ca.crt uh, and the crl.pem file. I'm gonna go ahead and drag those over there as well. So now both of those are there. So if I come back over to here and, uh, and, I, and just to verify, oops, that's not what I meant to do, uh, we've got uh, an open VPN file here, and we've got a couple of certificate files in here. So what I can now do is go ahead and click on start. We'll open up the logs. And it looks like everything there is working now. So what I wanna do, it uh, looks like it's, so it's still it's still creating files here. Okay, so it says started Qubit Torrent Daemon successfully. So now let's go back to FileZilla. Oops. We go back and we actually click refresh. Now we've actually got a Qubit Torrent folder that we didn't have before. So that should be good to go. So now what I wanna do um, is actually copy that, paste it in there, and I'm gonna go to port 8080, oops, like so. Hey, look, now we've got a, a, a UI that we can log into. So it's gonna be admin and the password is admin admin. So we'll go ahead and log in. And now we have uh, our Qubit Torrent set up and ready to go. 
So the next thing, of course, what we want to do is make sure that it's actually working. Okay, so in order to make sure that this is working, what we're going to need is a torrent file. So I've gone ahead and downloaded one uh, from a tracker that I use. So we're going to go ahead and choose our torrent file. We'll go ahead and get that started and we'll go ahead and click on upload at that point. So now we'll give this a minute uh, to go ahead and connect and do what it needs to do in order to start downloading that file. Okay, so it's connecting and it's 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 connecting at a really, really low speed there. Um, so that's something that you may run into. Uh, if you're connected to a, a VPN source or a, or a, a node, a host, whatever, um, and you notice that you get slow speeds, you may wanna stop uh, the, the container and switch to a different OVPN file. Like I said, I'm connected via uh, Sweden, I believe. Uh, Spain might be a better option or the UK might be a better option. You may have to play around with this until you get speeds that you're happy with. Okay, so I went ahead and did some testing, tried some different OVPN uh, files, some different locations basically. And uh, here you can see that instead of just the uh, couple hundred kilobytes that I was getting, uh, now I'm getting uh, actually closer to 10 megabits per second. So I had to try several different OVPN files. And of course, in order to do that, you've got to uh, restart the container each time you try a different OVPN file. Uh, but eventually you'll find the one that works best for your setup. And like I said here, I'm getting 11. Uh, about 11 megabytes per second or megabits per second rather. Uh, so this is going pretty well. So if we come over to uh, my tracker here, you can see the different uh, IP addresses that I've connected with this morning, doing some different testing, things like that with different locations. Um, obviously these are all uh, hidden behind a VPN. So none of these are my real IP address. Um, and like I said, it took some trial and error, but I got it. Uh, now we've got solid speeds and uh, we're, we should be pretty much good to go at that point. Okay guys, so there you go. There's how to set up Qubit Torrent using uh, an open VPN compatible uh, VPN system to uh, hide your IP address when you're doing peer to peer sharing. Now, of course there was some troubleshooting, some testing of some different OVPN files to make sure we're getting a good solid connection uh, that we can rely on, uh, something that's going to stay connected with a good speed. Uh, like I said, I ended up trying uh, three or four different uh, locales before I found one that was a good speed for me. And uh, then it was pretty much just ready to go. So hopefully you found this video helpful and if you did do me a favor give the video a thumbs up uh, that would mean a lot to me uh, also if you want to help support the channel there's a 50 50 shot on whether or not this video will be demonetized uh, my last one was and then wasn't and it's kind of always this back and forth uh, with topics like this so if you found the video helpful and you want to help the channel out a little bit uh, there's a coffee link down there where you can give just like a one-time donation or if you want to become a patreon because you like this kind of content and you want to support the channel moving forward with more content like this uh, there's a Patreon Patreon link down there as well that you can check out. So with all of that being said, I, I think I've covered pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, like I said, we went ahead and set up Qubit Torrent using a, a VPN that's OVPN compatible, uh, in this case PIA, but I know there are lots and lots of other uh, compatible VPN services out there. You'll just have to Google um, OVPN uh, VPN providers or something like that, or OVPN or open VPN providers, something like that uh, should give you a list of other providers that you can use if PIA isn't your thing. So definitely check that out. Uh, if you've got a VPN that you know works, definitely leave that in the comment section down below and maybe we can start building a list of uh, VPN providers that work with open VPN. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, as always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.